Hey guys, so a viewer of mine sent in some e-paper price tag displays as he saw that I already hacked a few of them before and these are some unique types and also some unique sizes as these are 4.4 inch displays which are quite rare and were also quite a trouble to get running with a custom firmware or with a custom code. So my desk looks kind of like a mess now, but as we can see here, the display is finally updating. And the way was quite um, rocky. So the first thing is always just to unplug the battery and plug it in to see if the display is updating. On these types, unfortunately, it's not the case. So it's not possible to just use such a logic analyzer to read what the microcontroller, in this case, the CC2510 from Texas Instrument is sending to the display. So the way I did go first then was I was able to yeah, buy such an access point, which is there to control the displays originally like if you would buy a set of an access point and a few displays you use this access point to get the rf bridge working and the software side is running on your computer in the java application but i will not talk about this further as yeah this is other stuff that is involved so unfortunately i was not able to get the communication working between the display and the RF module. The reason is most likely as these displays have, in this case, um, an AES key which is set on first setup and then they are locked to one system and can only be reset via a PUC which is delivered when you get these displays in an extra envelope which I did not have. So these are kind of locked to the system they were originally. And the microcontroller on them is readout protected. So I was not able to just dump the firmware and look into the key or look into the puck. So I was quite yeah, stuck at that point. And as I just simply did not knew further, I yeah, took this display with the stock firmware still on it and just traced out all the PCB um, traces to the microcontroller and looked which pin goes where to revert it that way. And I then connected the logic analyzer to it and was able to read some very first um, commands that are sent to this display. And if this display is quite rare, there was no data sheet available or something. With what I came up then is these SPI commands, which are sent to the display on boot via the stock firmware to just set the display to sleep even without doing any yeah, updates on the display. After reverting these commands it was quite, ob quite obvious that first a 70 and then a 72 is sent to the display to communicate to it via SPI. And that way I googled the yeah, just simply these commands and was able to find some further manuals for it. Like these COG, so SIP on glass, driver interface, timing, whatever. But these are unfortunately only wrong sizes. So not the 4.4 display and also the connector type you can see in this data sheet is only for 40 pins FPC connectors 
but in case of this display we have a 50 pin connector so it just simply was not the right one but in general we could already see some similarities so we here see that the header is first sent with this hex 70 and then a 72 for the command data and so yeah it was possible to to do some first analysis but as the pins are different um, also the control of the display is a bit different so these displays have additional two pins to drive the update itself and yeah the next step was to write an email to the pair Vazive displays company and I was pretty surprised that they already answered after just two hours and I communicated a bit with them and was able to get the yeah real data sheet for these displays so as you can see now I'm able to drive and update them we are a custom firmware running direct directly on the CC microcontroller and it's programmed via the CC debugger and I could for example just uh, do another um, another update pattern so I will just quickly compile it and upload it and it should yeah show something different as you can see here then yeah so at this part these displays are kind of reversed I would say um, of course with the data sheet it was less reversing and more than hunting for the data sheet in the end but it's still yeah just nice to see them working now and yeah just in hindsight learning how to drive such an old model of an e-paper display as these days these are only controlled via SPI and here we have some yeah just real control lines to control them so I could even just make the lookup table which is not existing here different as we are writing the lookup table on our own via the update time so even partial refresh is no problem and yeah so I even could show that quickly if we uh, send out only 10 bytes instead of 100 we can see it here it's just one line is 100 bytes and just quickly compile that again and upload it we can see that now only partial the first mm, 10 bytes of display is updated and the rest is same as before this is not only possible for one full line but we can also just update one specific part and that pretty quick as we can see here as currently no SPI DMA is activated it's quite slow and yeah that's it um, I hope this story is a bit interesting it was quite a journey to get them working and took some hours but yeah, quite happy to see them running the next step is still of course to get the stock firmware working and somehow dumped to be able to drive them wireless without any additional hacking on the display itself but at this point i don't think it's unsecure as the aes key handling is made quite good and it's the first time i'm seeing such a good security on these devices uh yeah so that's it for today see you next time